we continue with our discussion on minimizing switching expressions using Carnot map. If you recall, we talked about how to minimize 3 variable and 4 variable functions. So, let us continue from that point onward. This is the third part of the lecture. So, the first thing that we talk about today, now in the examples we have taken, we did not consider do not care inputs so far. So, what is do not care input? You recall we mentioned this earlier also, do not care is a kind of input combination which normally will never come or appear. Like you think of an example where the input numbers are B C D, there is a 4 bit input which is coming which is a B C D number B C D digit. Now, we know in B C D the 4 bit combination can be from 0 0 0 0 up to 9 1 0 0 1. The remaining 6 combinations 10 11 12 13 14 15 they are considered to be invalid, they will never come as input. So, what the output will be under this 6 invalid input combinations is immaterial, we mark them as do not care. The output can be 0, it can be 1 also, I do not care because the corresponding input value will never come in practice, these are the do not cares. Okay? So, what I mean to say is that there exist functions where for some of the inputs which we call as do not cares, they will never appear, they will never appear and so the corresponding output values do not matter. We refer to them as do not cares and they are denoted by this x letter usually in the Carnot map. Now, the idea is as follows, you see when we make the Carnot map, of course, we mark the true min terms right? by using ones. Now, in addition, there will be some excess in the Carnot map. Let us take an example, let us say in a typical Carnot map. Let us say I have a 1 here, I have a 1 here, I have a 1 here, there is an x here. Normally, if the x was not there, I will make one cube like this and another cube like this, but because x is a do not care, which means I can assume it to be 0 or 1 as per my convenience. In this case, if I consider this x to be a 1, then I can make a bigger cube like this. So, I can make a bigger cube including x, but suppose there is another x here. So, I need not have to cover this x. So, if I cover the ones, the true minimum that is sufficient. The only thing that I can use with x is that I can use it to make a bigger cube whenever required. So, what I am saying that same thing I am mentioning here is that, that when creating the cubes, we can include cell marked with x to make the cubes larger and it is to be noted as I said that it is not necessarily to cover all the x marked cells. They are meant only for your purpose of making the cube larger and nothing else. Okay? They are really do not cares. Let us take an example. Now, the first thing let me tell you is that how do we represent a function with do not cares. This is one way in which we can refer. This summation or sigma notation indicates that these are the true min terms, these are the true min terms and sigma with a phi, phi denotes do not care, indicates that these four are the do not cares. Now, in some book you will find instead of sigma phi, they have also denoted it like this d 3, 10, 14, 15, it means the same thing, they are do not cares. Okay? d means do not cares. Now, let us look at this example. 
this 1, 5, 9, 11, 12, 13, this 6 are the true mean terms which are noted down here. These are the 6 true mean terms and there are 4 do not care 3, 10, 14, 15. This is 3, this is 10, this is 14 and this is 15. Okay? Now, with this ones and excess, let us form the cubes. Well, one large cube I can see is this, we can make a cube like this. Now, with this excess, I can make larger cubes, like for example, I can make a cube like this to cover this one, and this one single one is still remaining. I can make another big cube including one of the do not care here like this. But you see I do not need to cover all the do not care this x remains let it remain, but I have covered all the ones that is that is what I want. So, this long one will be c bar d plus this one will be a b and this will be 0, 0, 0 will be b bar and d. This is the minimized form in presence of do not cares. Right? So, when there are do not cares, you can use this axis to your advantage like this. Right? Okay. Let us take another example. This is an example where there are three true min terms 0, 7 and 10, this is 0, this is uh, 7 and this is 10, 2, 5, 8, 15, this is 2, 5, 8 and 15. Well, here you see there are two ones in the corner and two x's in the corner. So, you can make one cube out of these four and there is one single one left out you can either make this or this let us make this this is fine this is done so the four corners will be b bar and d bar and this cube will be 0 1 which is a bar b and 0 1 1 is d and d this is the minimized form So, this examples actually tell you or show you that how to minimize using easy, means using k map when some of the min terms are marked as do not cares. Now, let us come to some, some important definitions with respect to Carnot maps which will be required in our next method of minimization that we will be considering after this. Well, we know what is meant by min terms, true min terms, false min, false min terms. Now, we introduce some new concepts called implicants, prime implicants, essential prime implicants. Let us see what these are. Okay. We start with implicant. Well, implicant means as the definition says, suppose I have a function of n variables. Let us take an example. Suppose I have a function f, let us say of three variables, suppose the function is a bar b c or a c or a c bar or uh, let us say b bar c bar, let us say this is my function. Now, a min term, see a min term will be an implicant if and only if for all combinations of the variables, whenever the min term is 1, f is also 1. Here, let us say, uh, what I am saying is that, let us say this a bar b c, this a bar b c this can be an implicant. 
this implicant means that whenever for some input combination this I mean uh, uh, this implicant is 1 the function will also be 1. But you think of this A c bar this A c bar you can write as A b c bar or A b bar c bar this A c bar you can expand by b like this this a b c bar is a min term a b bar c bar is also a min term. So, you call these as implicants this implicant means you see whenever a equal to 1 b equal to 1 and c equal to 0 let us say this first min term or implicant will be 1 a b c bar. Now, because in f this is one of the terms f will also be 1 that is the definition a min term is an implicant if and only for all combination of the variable whenever this implicant is 1 f is also 1 right this is a necessary condition. Now, prime implicant is a special kind of an implicant prime implicant says that it is a it is an implicant where if I delete any literal for it from it it do not remain an implicant anymore. Let us take an example here which is given here f equal to a bar b a c b bar c bar. Here what I say is that this a bar b here we are saying a bar b is a prime implicant why this a bar b means what. So, for what input combinations a bar b is 1 so, let us say for a b c values if I want to list a bar b means what a 0 b 1. So, c can be either 0 c can be either 1 these are the two combinations this is an implicant because whenever a bar b is 1 the function f is also 1, but what it says is that if you delete one literal from here like if I remove b bar I make it only a bar this a bar is not an implicant anymore. Because for a bar I can have an input combination 0 0 0 also or 0 0 1 also a is 1 b c is something. So, a bar will be true but this is not an implicant therefore, I say that this this a bar is not a prime implicant. So, a prime implicant is something which is in some sort in some way it is minimal like I cannot remove or delete any literal from it and even after removal the property of implicant still holds right. Now, with respect to the Carnot map what does that mean? it means that it is a cube that is not completely covered by another ring cube. You see with respect to the Carnot map what is the meaning of this prime implicant and implicant. Suppose, I have a 4 variable Carnot map let us say there are 4 ones here and I have a cube like this. This is a prime implicant. Now, if I consider a smaller cube like this which is a proper subset of the larger cube this will be an implicant, but not a prime implicant. Because from this one I can delete one of the variable still it will not change I will have an example later I shall show you this is the basic idea let us proceed. Let us take an example here. Here we have a 4 variable map. Now, in this map, if you look at the cubes, this is 1 cube, this is 1 cube, this is 1 cube, all possible cubes I am showing, not the minimum one. This is 1 cube, this is also a cube. So, how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, corresponding to this 5 cubes 
the product terms are like this you can check this one means a bar c bar d bar this one this one means a bar b c bar uh, a bar b c bar a bar b c bar it should be this one i think a b bar c bar anyway this one uh, let's see this and this one is a c bar d a c bar d is this the big one is b d b d and uh, b bar c bar d is b bar this one this one okay this and this this one this this one this and this one so, here you can add all the implicants like this, these are all set of prime implicants, but what I am saying is that if we have let us say I make a cube like this, what does this cube mean? This cube means A, B and D, A, B, D right, but I could have also had a bigger cube like this the bigger cube what does that bigger cube mean b d bigger cube is also a prime implicant it says that a b d is not a prime implicant because if i delete one of the literal let us say a whatever remains b d that is also a prime implicant so from the carnot map it means any cube which is not the largest one will not be the prime implicant if you consider the largest possible cubes only, they will all be the prime implicants. Okay. From the Carnot map, this is the meaning. Okay. And there is a notion of essential prime implicant. Some of the prime implicant may not be essential, some of the prime implicant can be essential. The notion is like this, some of the prime implicant is called essential, if that prime implicant covers at least one min term of the function, which is not covered by any other prime implicant. Like with respect to the Carnot map, let us say, here this is one prime implicant this is one prime implicant, this is one prime implicant. Let us call this three prime implicant, let us call this as p 1, let us call this as p 2 and this one as p 3. So, if we look at p 1, p 1 covers these two cells, which are not covered by p 2 or p 3. p 2 covers this cell which is not covered by p 1 or p 3 and p 3 covers these two cells which are not covered by p 1 or p 2. Therefore, all the three prime implicants p 1, p 2, p 3 are essential. So, with respect to the cubes in the Carnot map, the condition is that at least one cell of the cube is not covered by any other prime implicant. This is what I just now explained. Okay. Such prime implicants are called essential prime implicants. Now, take an example here where the prime implicants are not essential. Why it is so? You look at the cubes here, this is a three variable function, one cube is this, one cube is this, one cube is this, one is this, one is this and one is this. So, this is like a cyclic one, this is called a cyclic prime implicant chart. You see this, they are all connected in a chain and you cannot identify any one prime implicant here, which is covering one literal or cell, which is not covered by any other prime implicant. Like for example, if you consider this, this one, both the ones that are covered by some other 
cube also. This one is covered by this cube, this one is covered by this cube. So, none of the prime implicants here are essential. Here there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 prime implicants, but none of them are essential. Okay. Now, I am not giving an example, just showing you how a 5 variable Carnot map looks like, just to tell you that it is it is a little more complex. You see 5 variable Carnot map will be having 5 variables here, let us say 2 variables on, th on this direction, the other 3 variable on this direction. You see here as I said the numbering would be something similar to the grey code numbering, they will be differing in one position 0, 0, 0, 0001 1, 1, 1, 0. Here you see similarly 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 1 0 and again back to 0 0 0. You see between adjacent cells it is differing by exactly 1 bit position and a b c d if you represent and write down the decimal numbers it will be something like this you can check 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 because gray code is a reflected code you can see there is a reflection kind of a thing across this it is a mirror image. 0, 1, 2, 3 from other side you count 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 like that. Okay. 6 variable again there will be 1 here, 1 here, it will become much bigger, it will become very complicated okay, forming the cubes. Like, like when you are forming the cubes, you cannot form a cube like this. For example, 3 from this side and 1 from this side, this is not a valid cube. The rule is that you should have a power of 2 from this side and power of 2 from this side, they will be formed into a single cube. So, the rules are much more complicated here. So, I am not I'm showing an example in this case 5 variable. Now, there are some results which you can uh, just summarize with respect to what we have talked about the prime implicants, implicants, essential prime implicants and so on. These results are important in understanding what we shall be discussing next. Now, I am just showing a few of these results here. First result says that any E redundant sum of products, E redundant means it is a minimized form, E redundant sum of product means all the product terms are, are essential. If you remove one of the product terms, the function will become different. But you may have some function where even if you remove a product term, the function does not change, which means that product term was redundant, it was not required. Okay. When I say irredundant, it means it is a minimized form. That kind of expression for a function f is a union of prime implicants of f, this is important. It says that any minimized expression in sum of product form, whatever you write something plus something plus something, these somethings must all be prime implicants. This is the first result that in any minimized expression, all the product terms must be corresponding to prime implicants, right. And second point is the essential prime implicants are those you recall, which will be covering some min term that are not covered by any other prime implicant. So, in any minimized expression those essential prime implicants must always be present, otherwise it cannot represent the function, some of the min terms it cannot cover. right? So, the second point says that the set of all essential prime implicants must be present in any irredundant sum of product expression. And the third point is just, just a corollary of it, it says any prime implicant covered by the sum of the essential prime implicants must not be contained in any redundant. It says that suppose I have some essential prime implicant, let us say I have this one essential prime implicant, another essential another essential, let us say p 1, p 2, p 3. Let us say there is some prime implicant, not yeah, 
there is some prime implicate may not be essential here in the common area in this p 1 p 2 p 3. Now, if this is here then this fellow must not be contained in any redundant expression because p 1 p 2 p 3 because they are essential they will always be there, but because they are always there anything which is already covered must not be there. So, any prime implicant covered by the union or the sum of the essential prime implicants must not be present in any minimized form that is the idea. Okay. These are some of the results. Now, just one thing let me tell you briefly we talked about how to generate minimum sum of products expression using Carnot map, but what about product of sums because of the principle of duality if you can do sum of products you should be also be able to do product of sums. So, using Carnot map in fact, we can also do that I shall just take one example to show you how to do it without going into too much detail. Okay. So, the point to note is that the process is somewhat similar there are a couple of differences. The first difference is that when you form the cubes you form them using the 0 cells or the false mean terms not the 1 cells which you do for sum of product. And lastly when you write down the expression for example, when you are writing down the expression for sum of product if there was 1 0 here you are writing a b bar. Okay. 1 means a 0 means b bar, but here the convention will be different a variable corresponding to be 1 will be complemented while a variable corresponding to be 0 will not be complemented. So, for 1 you will be writing a bar for 0 you will be writing let us say b these are the two changes let us take an example to show you how it works. Okay. Let us see what this slide means. Consider we have a function like this, it is in the sum of products form, these are the true mean terms 1, 4, 5, 6, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, which is shown by this Carnot map, these are the ones. Now, the remaining cells will be zeros. there are 11, so the remaining uh, uh, there how many 5 9. So, the remaining 7 will be zeros. Now, sometimes this remaining cells which are zeros are written in this product or pi notation pi of this means these are the false mean terms of the function sigma means these are the true mean terms pi means these are the false mean terms. So, when I talk about product of sum we need to talk about the false mean terms and you make a cube just like you did earlier there are 4 corner cells make a cube out of them there will be 1 cube like this and let us say I make 1 cube like this that is all I have covered everything. Now, out of the 4 corner cells let us see what are the thing. Uh, just I am writing in terms of a b c d 4 corner cells here and here 0 0 and 1 0. So, b is 0 okay, b is 0 and here 0 0 and 1 0 d is 0. So, I said the convention is, is just the reverse b is 0 d is 0 means they will be in the uncomplemented form I write b or d this is one of my sum term take this in this 0 0 0 1 means a is 0. So, a is 0 and here 1 1. So, c is 1 d is 1 this is these are not here. So, a is 0 c is 1 d is 1. So, this term will be a bar or oh sorry this will be a will be a plus c bar or d bar yeah and the last one uh, 
this to this is a 1 b 0. So, a 1 b 0 and uh, c is 0, d is not there. So, it will be a bar or b or c. This will be the product of some expression. This is the rule. You consider the zeros, try to cover the zeros and when you write down the expression, same way for zeros you use uncomplemented form, for ones you use complemented form, but instead of sum up product write them in product of sum form. So, this will be my function in this case. So, if you write it in sum up product form you will be getting some expression, if you write in product of sum form you will be getting some other expression. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture. In the next lecture we shall see how we can follow some more systematic approach. There is something called a tabular approach which can be done more systematically we can, we can, which you can also use for larger functions, functions with more than 4, 5 or 6 variables. We shall be discussing about that in our next lecture. Thank you.